I had these next couple of reviews written out days ago, and I might as well not let them go to waste. Here are my late thoughts on Spider-Man Far From Home. In this first installment of a new era for the MCU, the world is mourning the death of Iron Man, and they're looking to Spider-Man, one of the few available Avengers, to be their hero. While Peter Parker travels to Europe with his friends, his vacation is interrupted when Nick Fury recruits him to fight giant monsters made of the Earth's elements, alongside a new hero named Mysterio, played by Jake Gyllenhaal. Now after seeing Avengers Endgame, I knew that the MCU was never going to be the same. So what I wanted going into Spider-Man Far From Home was some real hope for what's to come in this new phase of Marvel movies. And it wasn't until the mid-credits scene that the movie really did that, which I'll touch on after I give my score. But still, Far From Home is decent. I liked it about as much as I liked Spider-Man Homecoming. What keeps it from being a great Marvel movie is that the story doesn't have a lot of weight to it. It's understandable to have a more light-hearted movie after Endgame, but that tone that it goes for conflicts with what Peter Parker is facing. On top of missing Tony Stark, Peter feels that too much is being expected of him to just step up and be the next Iron Man, but it just doesn't bear the emotional heft that it should. I had a feeling that this would be the case when early in the movie, we see this humorously cheap high school-made slideshow of the deceased Avengers with Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You playing over it. After the impact their deaths left by the end of Endgame, it felt rather distasteful for that to be one of the first things we see in this movie. That being said, Far From Home is still enjoyable. The action is fun despite one fight sequence from the trailers being excluded from the final cut. There are a couple of scenes that take place in these... I won't say exactly what they are, I'll just call them illusions. Peter tumbles helplessly through one of them, and later fights his way through the other. These contain some of the most inventive visuals in any Marvel movie, and one moment in one of them was borderline terrifying. Tom Holland, while still not my favorite Spider-Man, has his likability intact, and Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio is outstanding. He's such a fine actor, I honestly wonder if there's any role he can't play. And I'm so jealous that my brother ran into him at a cafe in Seattle once. That's no joke. A highlight of Homecoming was the supporting characters, and such is the case again here. Ned is a comedic dynamite. One of the funniest parts is how he and Betty Brandt become an item totally out of the blue, and how that comes up now and then throughout the movie. The romantic element, I thought, was a weak aspect of Homecoming. Peter and Liz had a severe lack of chemistry, so I didn't feel anything when she moved away at the end. The romance is a little better and far from home. It's now MJ that Peter is crushing on, and they have one really good scene together on a bridge. Up until then, though, it only goes as far as Peter trying to make plans on how and where he's going to tell MJ how he feels. But they always get botched because he gets called in by Nick Fury, so Peter and MJ's screen time together is still limited. Aside from the elemental monsters, there is a main villain, and if you have any knowledge of the comics, you probably knew ahead of time who it is. The execution of the villain reveal is pretty cool, but his motivation is very generic, even done before in this very universe. So overall, this is less than the movie I wanted to see after Endgame. It doesn't bear the emotional weight that it ought to, and there are a few surprises other than the mid credit scene. But it still has that high school drama vibe that helps distinguish this Spider-Man from other iterations, and it's entertaining with some very creative visuals. I'm going to score this movie 1% lower than I did Homecoming. 63% for Spider-Man Far From Home. Okay, a couple of spoilers to get off my mind. The mid credits scene was simultaneously a total oh no and a total oh yes moment. So to the surprise of few audience members, Mysterio is the villain, and he's created these projections of himself fighting these monsters to make people turn to him as the villain they need after the death of Iron Man. So after Spider-Man defeats Mysterio, we find that as he was dying, he recorded a message making it seem that he was still a hero and that Spider-Man killed him, and proceeds to reveal his identity. This is where I really feel like this Spider-Man series is starting to kick into high gear. We've seen movies where the superhero is viewed by the public as a criminal, but for them to also know his name and face is a concept that I don't think has been explored before. I am very interested to see where that goes. But the number one thing to look forward to in future Spider-Man movies, J.K. Simmons 
is returning as J. Jonah Jameson. Freaking yes! That's a wrap. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this review helpful. Like and share, subscribe for more. This is Pop Culture. I'm Alex Pop.